Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we'll be more or less finishing up the bodywork on the Grand Hauler. We've got quite a few fiddly bits and there's quite a lot of waiting for things to dry. The first job will be setting things up for the headlights. The kit comes with these nice chrome surrounds. The problem with them though, they only have a lens and a light in the outer hull. To fix it, I've cut the blank side out and made a light pipe type LED holder from some clear acrylic sheet. To get the shape, I've just stuck one of the extra lenses on the front. It'll need a bit of paint to stop the light leaking before the final fit, but it's going to do the job quite nicely. Next, we need to make the stock light buckets fit a little bit better. They stick out past the body a fraction of a millimetre. When we stick the surrounds on, it's going to leave a gap, which just won't do. So the body needs to come off, and by now we're well trained in the removal process. Just remove all the M3 screws and lift it away. Next we need to strip down the body, removing all the shiny bits and bobs. But we've seen it all before, so I'll just edit it out to save some repetition. Okay, we need to take a little bit of material off the outside surface of the light bucket. The easiest way to do it is to use a sanding block. Now I'm a big fan of these permagrit blocks, they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but the basic short block is extremely useful. The best bit though, when they clog up a bit, you can give them a rinse and a scrub with a nylon brush and they're as good as new. This one's years old and still works a treat. For the light bucket, we want to take the surface down a little at a time until it's flat to the body. When they're both a good fit to the body, we can mark up where we need to cut to make the second light fit. The easiest method is to hold up the surround very carefully lining it up with the light bucket and draw around the inside of the second light. That gives us the marking we need to cut the body and the bucket. Now we just need to trim them up and we should find everything fits. The bucket goes on the back and the new square hole all lines up. The light pipe slots in the front, well so far so good, and the surround should neatly line up on the front. Nice! They're all sized up ready to fit but that's going to be after the paint. Next we've got some orange lenses to glue in. The parts are rather small, so we'll stick them in while the chrome bits are still on their parts trees. But first, so we can build up the side mirrors while the glue dries here, we need to clip off all the parts for the mirrors. There's the big plates for the main mirrors, the round ones for the blind spot mirrors I guess. Okay, the lights. We need to glue the lenses on with some poly cement. The Tamiya stuff is very nice, but I've only seen them come with a big brush for application, which normally ends up with the stuff getting where you don't really want it. I prefer the Humberol and Revell cement that comes with a thin tube. You can be very precise with it. For the roof lights, we need the little orange lenses. I'll do one of them here so you get the idea. We need to clip the lenses free of the tree and carefully cut away any remaining tree from the lens. It needs to be a really good fit. To make it easier to get in position, we can use a cocktail stick with a little ball of blue tack on the end to hold it. Next we need to apply some poly cement on the chrome bit. Ideally we'd want to scrape all the chrome off the gluing surface, but the lens isn't going to see much stress, so I think we'll get away with gluing to the chrome. When we've got some cement all the way around, we can carefully position the lens, making sure it's fully seated. Then with some tweezers, remove the cocktail stick. Rinse and repeat for the rest of them. The truck only needs five of the lights, but we might as well do all six, so we've got a spare ready just in case. The indicators go together in more or less the same way, except they use the larger orange lenses. That lot's going to take a good 20 minutes to become handleable, and it will be an overnight wait for them to fully harden up. So while we wait, we can get some more bits gluing up. Right then, the mirrors. There's a few bits to go together. The round back piece slots in at the bottom. Next, the main mirror goes in then the round mirror. As always, it pays to do a dry build just in case things don't quite fit. Because the poly cement takes a little while to dry, we can apply all the glue at once. We need to run some round the edge where the main mirror goes, and we need some where the bottom piece sits. Drop the bottom bit in and apply some more cement on the top. Next is the main mirror, followed by some more cement around the edge of the round bit to hold the round mirror in. That little lot's going to have a tendency to try and fall apart, so while it dries we can use a wooden clothes peg to hold it all together. Just like the lenses, it will want a good 20 minutes before it's handleable. Ok, air horns next, and these are a bit of a faff. The first bit's easy enough, we need to glue the covers onto the front of the cones, and it's just a case of applying a spot of cement on the four lugs and sticking it in place. And now we need to fit the two main bits together. 
there's a tiny nub on the end that fits in a hole in the cone. With instant glue like cyanoacrylate it would be fairly easy, but you'd run a risk of fogging up the chrome. The problem we've got is the two parts don't stay together by themselves. So while the glue hardens up they're going to try and fall apart. There's nowhere convenient to tape the bits together so we're left with carefully having to balance them. Another clothes peg helps a bit as you can set it up on the edge of a desk but it's still a bit of a pain. All it would take from Tamiya is to have that little nub on the end three or four millimeters longer and a suitable hole in the end of the cone. It would support itself and if the fit was good you probably wouldn't even need the glue. Anyway on to the next bit. For some reason there's a huge hole in the roof it looks like there might have been a sunroof, but Tamiya has an opaque insert to mount some of the roof lights. Perhaps it's just to make the moulds that bit cheaper to make. All we need to do now is pop the insert in and drop a few drops of plasti weld around the edge. It will find its own way around the seam and after an hour or so it's going to be nice and solid. While that dries we can go around the back and work on the holes in the cab. Well they're not all the way through but we still need to fill them. To give the filler the best chance of staying put we need to scrape the plastic with the back of a knife. The goal is to make nice rough surfaces to act as a key. Next we need to protect the seam on the bottom edge. If we get filler on it it's going to be a bit of a pain to clean it up again. So we need to use a bit of masking tape so we can just peel it off. We shouldn't really need it but it's best to be safe. For filler I'm going to use some good old Isopon P38. It does shrink a bit, but as long as you're patient letting it harden up before you sand it, it works perfectly well. We don't want to run out part way through, so we always mix up a lot more than we need. Now we just need to apply it to the body. The idea is to try and fill the holes completely with no voids. Start in the middle and keep adding filler until you've got a smooth-ish surface a little bit above the plastic to account for the shrinkage. While it's still soft, peel off the masking tape. Well, it does look a bit rough, but we can be fairly sure we've got all the holes filled, and importantly, the filler's not going to fall out. The roof needs similar treatment. This time we've got some bosses moulded into the roof for the air horns to mount to. So, to keep the filler off, we'll pop some masking tape over them. Next, we need a fresh batch of filler, again mixing up a lot more than we actually need. The filler needs to get pressed into the gap between the insert and the roof, building it up until there's a bit of a layer well onto the flat surface. Leave it to harden up, and it does take a lot longer than you'd think. Leaving it overnight probably isn't such a bad idea. When it has hardened, sand it down until most of the filler is very thin or gone. Then work through a few grades of wet and dry paper until it's nice and smooth. At this stage it's not going to be perfect, we need to give it a quick spray with some primer so we can see the surface. As you can see it's pretty close, but a bit more work with the wet and dry will finish the job quite well. With everything nice and smooth, we can start the priming proper. We'll need to do the rear wheel arches too. It's the same though, smooth out any imperfections and start painting. For primer, we need lots of fairly thin coats. The big thing to really avoid is overloading with paint and getting runs. It's not too bad to sand them, but as long as you keep the primer light, you won't have to. On the inside, I've painted the body with matte black. Since there's not much of an interior, it's going to hide everything quite nicely. All that primer is just touch dry at the moment, so before we paint the colour we need to let it dry completely. So in the meantime we can do a little bit more of the chrome parts. For the indicators all we need to do is clip them through the parts tree and they're ready to fit. For the roof lights there's a bit more to do. We need the front bits we glued to the lenses earlier, all six of them, along with the main bodies R4s. The front bits fit into the main body some seem to fit slightly better than others, so as always do a dry fit first and adjust as needed. To hold them together we'll need some more poly cement. We need a good bit around the inside where the front bit sits. Pop the two bits together and lay a strip of masking tape along the top to hold it in position. Do all six so they can sit and dry ready to fit later. Next we can glue the headlight lenses in. There's only one to fit on the side that goes over the stop light bucket but we need to stick them in now so they're dry when we want to glue the surrounds in later. All we do is apply a little bit of poly cement in the slots and carefully drop the lens in place. We need to be careful not to get too much cement in there, we don't want it to leak out over the lens. Right then, the next step for the body, the paint. Yep, it's blue, as close as I could get to the blue in the RC Mojo logo. It looks a bit off under this light, but it's close enough. You can see I've masked off the inside of the body too, the windows, the grille and the entire back and underneath. 
just so we avoid getting any blue overspray on the matte black inside. At this stage it's just the blue paint, so before we gloss coat we need to hand paint a couple of little details, like the door handles. I've just gone and painted them silver, there's no need to go silly, sometimes keeping things simple ends up looking better. Next is a fun bit, the gloss clear coat. The trick with this stuff is getting the amount just right. Too little and it'll end up lumpy, too much and you get runs. I tend to hold the body up to a light while spraying to get a good reflection on the surface. As soon as a clear coat looks sharp, I stop. Usually it does the job, but it does take a bit of practice. The masking can come off now. We've got a bit of paint build up around the windows, but that's not too bad. We can just trim it off with a sharp knife and no one will ever need to know. I've got a bit of overspray on the bonnet and roof, so that's going to need a bit of extra attention. But it's so mild it will probably smooth down with just a little bit of polish. Here's the back of the cab and the wheel arches. They've not been polished, that's just the clear coat. They're ready to fit though, so on to the next stage. There we go, arches on, and the main body polished up where the overspray was, so it's nice and shiny. Very nice. Time to fit all the bits to the body. First will be the roof lights. They're held in with 2mm self tappers and washers. They're extremely fiddly to install. Keeping a grip on the lights while installing the screws without slipping is quite a challenge. Take your time and it does all come together. Indicators next. These get fitted with 2mm self tappers again. They do provide some LED holders, but I'm not going to use them. These ones have far better access, so go together quite easily. Now for the air horns. These have some holes in the roof to fit in, so all we do is apply some poly cement to the little posts. We don't need a lot of it, just a spot or two. Pop the air horn in position. With the paint in the roof it should be quite a tight fit, so they should stay upright on their own. Grill and light buckets next. We've seen these fitted and removed several times already. It's just a short self tapper at the top and four long ones through the buckets into the grill. Our custom light pipe LED holders can slot in their holes now. We need to apply some poly cement to the buckets and to the body where the surround sits. The poly cement will soften the paint up so it will stick quite nicely. Now we can sit the surrounds in place and leave them to dry. 20 minutes they should be handleable as usual. Next we're going to pop the windows in. It's the same as we've done before. There's the windscreen and the two side windows which are held in with the side mirrors so they're going to get fitted too. Exhaust get fitted to the side with the flange nuts as usual. Once all the bits are fitted and we're sure they're all okay we can go around with some thread lock too. Same with the air boxes and their flange nuts. The dashboard goes in with its two self tappers. While doing up the screws we need to make sure the dash is pressed right up to the window. Back to the outside, we've got the windscreen wipers. To fit them, all we need to do is apply a little bit of poly cement to the bosses and press them into the holes in the body. The truck's not going to see a lot of off-road action, so that will be good enough to keep them on. On off-road trucks, I tend to glue the wipers as well as the bosses to the body so they can't get pulled off. Exhaust stacks on next. On the top, we need the exhaust tips. We'll use some Yoohoo pour smeared inside the pipe to keep them on. There was a suggestion for cutting the length down a bit, but I've got a feeling we're going to need the full height for the ends to clear the height of the box trailers. Can't say for sure as I don't have a trailer yet, but it looks that way in the pictures. Nearly there now, we just need to fit the body to the chassis, remembering to be really careful not to get the steering wheel tangled up in the driver's hands. When it's all down, we can install the eight screws. It's tempting to try and get the body to come on and off a bit easier. I think it would need the exhaust modifying a bit so the bottom elbow doesn't get caught up, but it's not going to be coming off all that often, so I don't think it's worth doing. Last bit, we can pop the rear cover in. It's built up exactly as stock. Remember, we had to sand the top edge ever so slightly? Well, because of that, it fits a treat. And there we go. That would be the end of the video, but the postman's been with one more part we can fit. The Grand Hauler comes with this huge visor, and for some trucks it looks great but it's not really the look I'm after. I want to have the window unobscured in case I fit a camera. So I found a King Hauler visor on eBay. It's much smaller and leaves more of the window usable, but it still adds that little bit of extra chrome just to tie it all together. To fit, we just need a couple of spots of poly cement where the ends of the visor sit. The cement will stick to the paint well enough. We just need to carefully put the visor in position and there we have it. One complete body. I was hoping to have a little bit of video of it running around in the car park, but I've not had a chance to get out with it. 
Never mind though, just imagine that bit at the end of the last video, just a bit more shiny and blue. Next week we're going to be upgrading the electronics a bit, fitting a more suitable ESC and motor. That's it for now though, so thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you want the next video in your feed, and comment if you're feeling chatty. Bye guys!